this week we are going to tackle something that should be light, but uh, we all know these things can go left really fast, and we probably all have parties, or sorry, all have stories about how these things have gone left really fast. And we're talking about holiday parties. So tis the season, right? We want to uh, celebrate our team, celebrate the year, celebrate the holidays that we are experiencing. So holiday parties, oh my. <laughs> um, so, so, so obviously passing around mistletoe um, uh, at the party is a bad idea. But but what are some of the what are some of the things that people should be doing if they want to have a, a great a great holiday party? I could definitely tell you some stories that would probably uh, <laughs> probably frighten you. But I would say, you know, in in HR, there's not too much that surprises me anymore. But without a doubt, at every organization that I've been a part of. Uh, holiday parties or really just parties in general can sometimes be a very uh, sensitive topic because if there is going to be alcohol involved, we know um, that oftentimes that is the catalyst to problems, um, concerns, risks, things that as HR pros, uh, we do everything possible to try to avoid. Liquid courage lowers inhibitions for sure. This would be a really great topic to chat about, uh, even though most, uh, I'm certain, have already had uh, their holiday parties by the time this episode airs, but certainly there's more parties on the horizon. So there's a couple of things I thought would be really great to talk about, uh, to share some tips, you know, evaluating some of the risk and considerations that go into decisions for party planning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yeah, yeah. Sure thing. So uh, the first recommendation I have is uh, to hold whatever event is being hosted off site if possible and to make it family friendly. Now, Joey, do you have any ideas of why this might be a good suggestion? Well, um, I think if you do it on site, you run the risk of people still thinking about work and maybe even hiding away to go do some work as opposed to uh, being in a brand new environment where you're able to just focus on the party. And also, if somebody's ra on a rager, you know, you're just cleaning up the party scene. You're not cleaning up the, the <laughs> office. You're not breaking computers and monitors and, and doors. <laughs> um, and then family friendly is probably just so that, um, that uh, no one has to cancel because they don't have childcare. So, um, I mean, that's a reason I would think of, but yeah. Sure, I think those are all really great ideas. And uh, I've absolutely seen uh, folks not leave their desk <laughs> when the event is held on site simply because and you know, they may have too much work or maybe they're just not, you know, not very social in their work environment. A couple of other ideas that I can think of is that holding your event off site um, really transfers some of the liability um, in terms of being at work um, and uh, from a risk standpoint versus, you know, being at another location where if something happened, it may, you know, th th then fall under that company's insurance coverage. Now, the family friendly aspect uh, is one, what you mentioned, Joey, but also if there are families, you know, friends, spouses, children, it, it seems to be that folks tend to be on a little better behavior <laughs> than it was, you know, just a colleague. So it does put a little bit of friendly pressure in that regard uh, to keep it tame, shall we say? Yeah. Yeah. Keep it tame. Keep, keep it uh, PG or G, G rated. What's another good uh, suggestion that you have for, for these holiday parties? Sure. So it, it goes back to some of what we were saying in the beginning. Oftentimes, much of the catalyst to uh, problems uh, is related to alcohol and uh, the risk that an employer can face, you know, if something happens. And so making this optional as opposed to a required event um, really removes the, what I consider the work requirement. 
in this regard. So if folks are required to attend, then as an organization, you're going to be on the hook for um, anything that may happen because it's considered you know, it's considered work. Whereas if it's optional, folks are voluntarily opting to join. And so there's not that uh, expectation or impression that this is, you know, considered working time. So I think that's a really important aspect. And, you know, Joey, when it comes to drinks specifically, and how to navigate, you know, that as a risk in itself, like serving drinks. What are some ideas that you have about things that companies can do to try to uh, keep their employees on their best behavior? <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a few things you can do, um, especially if you are taking summer's advice and going offsite. Um, I would recommend, first of all, having a bartender so that uh, someone professional is responsible. And a professional bartender, not mm -hmm. not Mike in accounting who says, oh, I'll be the bartender. I've got a heavy hand and give a heavy pour. <laughs> but uh, like a professional to make sure that drinks are assembled and uh, distributed in a, a, a safe manner. Uh, another thing that you can do to keep things safe is uh, – to do drinks by way of drink tickets. So maybe mm. everyone gets uh, one or two drink tickets. And um, once those are done, then maybe it turns into a, a cash bar situation, which would uh, reduce someone's desire to like pay to over consume alcohol uh, in the presence. Um, and then also you might want to shut the bar down a little early before the party's over. Similar to any wedding or sporting event where there's a last call and then there's an opportunity for people to um, to sober up before having to, to go somewhere. Uh, and speaking of going somewhere, why not have it at a hotel or someplace where um, if people did drive, maybe they could spend the night there. Uh, or somewhere that is uh, that you could easily do ride share and uh, and commute back home. Those are some of the things that you might want to think about for just like going open bar with all the liquor and alcohol and beer you can find and uh, having no uh, professional supervision. Yes, I'd also add to that, Joey. I think serving food um, for you know all of the reasons that we we already know uh, serving food to help with you know, alcohol consumption it is always a great idea um, just to help keep people, you know, as, as sober as possible. And then I love the idea about having it at a hotel so that folks had a place to crash if they weren't, you know, if they weren't safe to drive. And the last recommendation that I had on this is actually related because I've seen this work out um, quite well for some of the holiday parties that I've been a part of. And that is offering transportation on behalf, you know, offering transportation paid by the company for anybody who needs it, no questions asked. So, you know, essentially the, um, you know, the, the way this can work is just letting everybody know that they'd be reimbursed for, you know, transportation from the venue, you know, to a location of their choice up to, you know, a certain amount or transportation to their home, no questions asked. So, I think there's many ways to tackle it, but ensuring people absolutely 100% have a safe way to get home, I think is really important too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you want to make sure that your holiday parties are a value add to your team. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about how as a leader of a team, you can make these these moments memorable. Um, you know, we... we Let's talk about the safety one for, for, first and foremost. Um, we all know the, the research stats around drunk driving and the holidays and how accidents uh, happen. Well, you want to do what you can to protect your team members from being put in harm's way. So the more you can do to uh, keep them safe, uh, the better. Uh, the other thing is that moments like holiday parties when they aren't um, mandatory or stress-inducing, they really are an opportunity for team members to bond and to get to know one another outside of the confines of work responsibilities. And so 
you really want to look at your holiday party as a way to make relational investments into your team um, because that will carry you all the way through uh, the new year. Um, And then the other thing is just, you know, it's a great way to maybe see who's engaged, who, you know, does the Christmas sweater, ugly Christmas sweater, or who participates in the competitions or who's excited and thrilled to be there. Uh, and maybe maybe who's not so engaged uh, for whatever reason that would uh, require a little further exploration and conversation. But holiday parties are, are one of those things throughout the year that you can do for a teammate that has nothing to do with work. And so uh, I really believe in making the most of these opportunities because it's very rare that you get to just pause work as a team and celebrate something. So well said, Joey. And, uh, you know, I, I realized as you were speaking, gosh, I sound like I sound like a typical HR person, you know, holiday party. OK, here's all the things you can't do. <laughs> but, you know, no, really, we need I, that stuff. We need that. <laughs> I mean, come on. We haven't even talked in the show about uh, about SBF and uh, the whole FTX deal. Uh, oh, boy. So there's, there's still some bosses out there who need HR to tell them <laughs> what they shouldn't be doing. Um, right. But I digress. Go ahead, Summer. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the comment that I wanted to make is that, like, one, you know, if you only know HR as, you know, the, the department or team that tells you, no, you can't do things, to understand that it's, it's not that it's a no, it's just that there are reasons why uh, these recommendations are best practice and it's really to protect your team members and it's to protect the company as well so i think that it has you know it has the right intentions and that it can still absolutely 100 percent be fun um and i think you know it's it is important to get your team together even if it's in a virtual environment to spend that time uh, to celebrate and you know really just have fun because if employees are having fun uh, they're going to be that much more excited to come back and do it again. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And if you um, missed out on a on our show with Maverick, uh, we had Chica on from Maverick to talk about a fun thing that they did. It wasn't quite a holiday party, but it was a, a staff gathering. So go ahead and check out that episode for some ideas to make your next uh, holiday party a super fun one. Um, you know, incorporate some VR, have a blast. Oh, that's one thing we did not talk about, Summer. We talked about holiday parties for in-person gathering. But what about some ideas or thoughts around teams like us that are remote? Do you have any thoughts about about that? Well, I, I do. I mean, I think that there's still many things that can be done in a virtual environment in terms of, you know, gathering, celebration, engaging in activities that perhaps have been coordinated in advance. But it makes me think about uh, one of the organizations uh, I've had the opportunity to work with does a regular Friday happy hour. And yes, everybody shows up online with their adult beverage, just one, and, you know, just tries to chat about anything and everything, not work. And I think, you know, even something as simple as that with maybe um, some extra cheer sprinkled in, uh, it doesn't need to be complicated. I think having, you know, having folks get together and spend that time bonding, as you mentioned, Joey, about things that aren't work is really an important part of building the connections. Yeah, I, Summer, I think you 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 are onto something. I, one of the things that feels intimidating when throwing a party, let's just say you're a startup founder and this is your first time running a business and your first time being responsible for something like this, is you're like, oh my goodness, uh, I'm going to put a party together, but will people show up and will they have fun? The answer is yes, they'll show up, they'll have fun. It's not on you to carry the burden of entertaining everybody. I think you'll have those natural folks who take the lead on engaging in conversation, folks who uh, just laugh and joke and have a good time uh, naturally, and everyone else will rally around that. So uh, by all means, 
Take the time to gather this holiday season with your team, whether you're remote, hybrid, or in-person, and just know that the most important part is that you made the effort to say, hey, we're going to get together for something that, that has nothing to do with work and that we're just going to celebrate, you know, being being a team or celebrating a holiday. So uh, that's all I got to say about that.